Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Bus Drivers Are Out podcast for Episode 8 of the Challenge Free Agents. I am your host, Brian Cullen. So this week, I had a chance to speak with Laurel, one of the top female competitors going, and we had a chance to talk about everything up until this point for this season, including this past episode. So it's good to get her perspective on all things. And before I press play on that, let me just first remind you all to follow me on Twitter at Bus Drivers Are Out. Go to busdriversrout.com and subscribe to my YouTube channel. All right, now let's get down to it. So here is Laurel. Okay, so going into this season after taking the past three off, do you think you were the most mentally prepared for entering the house and dealing with the competition and everyone? Well, I mean, I would just say that going into this challenge after taking, what, the three off? Yeah. Um, after taking three off, just I was probably in the happiest place I've ever been in my life. Um, just so I guess that that would contribute to being mentally prepared. I felt really happy and myself, um, and really uninfluenced by outside factors that normally come into play when you're on television. So I really, mm-hmm. um. I felt good, you know, going in, and I felt like like myself. Mm. And did this also kind of like rejuvenate your pattern rather than if you were doing it every single year? It could get a little uh, a little boring after a while. This kind of rejuvenate uh, your feelings for all this? No, I don't think it's about rejuvenation. I think it's more about the fact that, like, after doing three shows in a row and going to three finals in a row, I was exhausted. I don't mm-hmm. think that I was rejuvenated for competition, but I was. it's just tiring. I don't know how people go literally every single time. I wouldn't be able to do that. It would just, mm-hmm. it would break me down as a human being. Yeah, absolutely. Did you feel any added pressure to get your first title, with, especially with this being an individual season, that it was all on you? Did you feel the pressure that, all right, this this, this has to be the one? No, I don't think that far ahead. Most of the time when I am, just in general, I don't think that far ahead. Like, I don't let the pressures of what could be influence how I'm living and acting in the moment that I'm living right now, for example. Mm -hmm. Um, So, no, they always ask me that in interviews, too. Do you feel like you need to... um, keep up with what people say about you. And, and I never feel that – I never feel what other people are feeling. I, I only live my life. I don't realize that people are talking about me or, you know, that they don't like me. I mean, I do realize that now from, like, Twitter and stuff, which is mm-hmm. unpleasant. But um, I don't really think about what other people are thinking about. I kind of just go about what I do and, you know, regarding competition – I just go and give my best every single time, and I think that there's some misconceptions of me out there where just because I have I set such a high standard for myself and I don't like failure and I tell myself that I can do things, people think that I'm arrogant or cocky, and you know that bothers me because I set my I set my I set my sights really high, and mm-hmm. I expect so much out of myself. I don't think that that's fair to say that I'm arrogant. I'm not. I just am confident in what I'm doing. And I, even if I'm not confident, I pretend to be so that I can, you know, what's that What's that thing? Fake it until you make it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> now, going into the season, I remember in the first episode you said you wanted to try to portray a, a nicer version of yourself. Now, was that mainly because of some of the backlash you've seen because of social media and that you wanted to try to give up a different side of you? Were you trying, actively trying to be a nicer person? Well, I was just trying to be less of an explosive person. You know what Mm -hmm. I mean? Like I have, I just feel that I wanted to be, you know, like my best, I guess. I I just didn't like in the past how, you know, you kind of get pigeonholed into one thing and then that becomes who you are. And um, it's just frustrating to have people see me only one way when, I mean, I'm really done arguing it at this point or trying to argue it 
just because there's no way I could argue everyone. Um, Mm -hmm. But, yeah, I I made an effort. I made a huge effort to do the best that I could in terms of not being how I've been portrayed in the past. Okay, okay. And then finding out this was an individual season, were you, I'm curious about this, because, you know, as you know, you're a very top competitor. So were you relieved or a little disappointed that Emily was not on this season, that you wouldn't get a chance to go head-to-head with her? That's something that we all were hoping we would get to see, but unfortunately that didn't happen. So were you kind of happy that she wasn't there to kind of make your path a little easier or disappointed that you wouldn't be faced with that challenge? I was shocked. I was shocked that no one was there, honestly. No offense to any of the girls. I mean, see, that's going to get me in trouble. But honestly, if I'm being 100% honest with you, I was shocked that no one was there. Who were who you hoping to go into? Obviously, Emily is one, but who were you hoping to really push you? Well, I mean, Evelyn is, you know, someone that I, I look to and respect as a competitor. Emily, I would love to see her compete now that, you know, she's been doing her CrossFit. I've never seen <clears throat> Cook compete or anything. Um, and, uh, you know, maybe some old school people even, too. However, I'm pretty sure that they're done with challenges. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And one of the old school people that uh, you've actually been butting heads with up until this episode was Nisa. So what was the the beginning of this rivalry because it didn't seem like it started this season. So where did this kind of all start from? Oh my God, it's not a rivalry. See, that's what bothers me about being on television. Just because I want to get her out of the competition or just because I vote her in does not indicate that there's any sort of rivalry there. I like Anissa. She's super fun. She is funny. She provides so much entertainment. She's a sweet person. The the reason for my voting in Anissa is because she does not pick sides ever. And so my thing is, if you don't pick a side, you're not on my side. If I can't trust you, then we can't work together. That's my only issue with Anissa. That's my only reasoning for voting her in. There is no rivalry, and I hate that people are trying to make it that. Okay, yeah, it just seemed like maybe it was more from her end because you definitely seemed to harbor some uh, ill feelings towards you, but I guess it's not mutual then. I think that she was just mad that I was voting her in, and she's not used to getting voted in, and nobody likes getting voted in, and so they get mad afterwards, and they, you know, want a reason for being mad, and whatever is easiest to blame, they go to first. Mm -hmm. And then what about with uh, Teresa after... You know, she rallied the troops, tried to get you thrown in, and then as it seemed like, as it turned out, you were going to be thrown in, she uh, changed her vote. So how, you know, I don't think you really had much of an issue with her going into this. So how did this change your perception of her after after that move? Well, you know, it just makes me think, like, why would you – it just – Okay. We're all in the house together, all right? It's not mm-hmm. like there's going to be any secrets. You know, like if you're going to, if you're going to go into a room and tell people, especially with Cara Maria in the room, somebody who I'm close with and who is my friend, if you're going to go into a room and say something and then try and get out of it, like we're on a television show. So even if you did get out of it when we were on the show, I would find out later. And so it just bothers me. Those tactics bother me. You know what I mean? Like, they mm-hmm. bothered me that she was too scared to come up to me and say, I want to vote you out. Like, that that would, even though I wouldn't like that, I could respect her in saying that. Devin did, this, Devin did that to me. She said, listen, right. like, I'm voting for you. And I didn't like that. I got mad at her for doing that. But I got over it, and in the end, now Devin and I have a mutual respect because she came to my face and said, listen, this is what I'm going to do. Like, what t- the- Teresa's behavior is just cowardly to me. If you're not able to face up or stand behind your decisions, who are you? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, I understand that. And it's not even like you would be offended if you voted in because you would have to know that 
I mean, it was a smart move for the girls throughout this whole season. Be any chance they can to get you in would probably be a smart move. So I don't think them targeting you really should have been a, a surprise or even upsetting to you. It's just probably the tactics you used, really, right? That's really what it comes down to. Yeah, when I watched her interviews, I was like, all right, okay, I can understand where she's coming from, sure. Um, I just don't like the way that she went about it. And so that, you know, that put a notch in my radar and you know it's just like things like that you know what I mean I had no reason to vote anyone in and so we all were just going based on what happened in the like what happened in the moment when we were there each day whatever happens you you know you figure things out as you go along and those things with those two people bothered me and gave me reason and you know I look for I look for either, when I'm voting someone in, I look for either, like, a weakness in in gameplay. I look for the ability to trust people or not trust people. I also look for competition. How good are you in each challenge? Mm -hmm. And if I can find anything of those three topics that, don't align with how I play, then I'll go and knock it out. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And then, uh, so jumping a little bit to this week now, we saw this was the first time that uh, Jordan was gone from the house. So you kind of mentioned that it kind of distracted you a little bit in the challenge. Do you think that played a part in uh, the team, your team's performance this week, not uh, performing as well as you would hope? Do you think Jordan's departure from the house affected you that way? See, this is why I usually don't get involved emotionally, and this is why I check out emotionally when I come into the challenge house, is because, yes, when I am affected by other things outside of playing a game, it it, it weakens my game. And so that's why I don't try and get romantically involved, because, you know, having Jordan go home affected me. And... For whatever the reason was, we see on, you know, the challenge, whether it was being paired with people that I don't really like on my team and not being able to work with them or put, you know, put my dislike for those two people aside and compete, or it was Jordan going home, or it was tension between me and Carl Maria. Those are the types of things. That's why I do not get involved in that type of stuff. That's why I check out because I don't want anything to weaken my play. Mm-hmm. No, that makes sense. That makes sense, definitely. And then going into the elimination against Denisa, we saw that you guys obviously the Oppenheimer, Oppenheimer Challenge. So was there any elimination that you were kind of hoping that it wouldn't be, or were you fairly confident no matter who you're going up against in any of the eliminations that, you know, you feel you can get it done? Well, I I didn't want it to be the one that we got. I didn't want the Oppenheimer one, the Oppenheimer one, because they, like, for a couple of reasons. I didn't want the Oppenheimer one because I didn't want to run in the circle in the sand um, because that's a risky – it was a risky game You where you could potentially fall or, you know, it's like a tight, narrow – it's a tight, narrow – corridor and Mm -hmm. I didn't want to make any mistakes you know what I mean um and then also the other thing is when you play Oppenheimer they take your hands and they tape them so like you don't have your fingers it's really weird they they take your hands they put them in gloves and then they tape your hand basically like a mitt like and they take your thumb down so like into a fist basically so it like threw me off you know, um, you when they really, did like, that, it threw off. Or anything like that. Yeah. Right, like you can't like grab. I I think that they just yeah. don't want you to grab the other person. It, it just it was weird, and I didn't like the feeling of that. Um, so that made me feel weird going into the game. Um, regarding, was there any game that I did not want? No, I didn't care which game I got. Okay. So just jumping back a little bit to uh, the big, one of the big moments in very recent challenges here with Jordan flipping over the cards now. Did you know that he was somewhat struggling with the decision about saying, you know, I mean, one of his confessionals, he said he's like waiting for you to say, don't do it, don't do it, just stay with me. Did you know that he was hoping for that? 
No, I didn't know that at all. Um, Would you have no. said something to him if he was, you know, really saying, like, you know, Laurel, I really kind of want to stay with you. Do you, you want me to back out of this? Would you kind of steer him one way, or was you just going to let him do what he wanted to do? I, I, I think it's right to let people do what they want to do. And the other thing is, like, you know, it creates, it, it actually helps people to fail big. You know what I mean? So, like, even though the, the opportunity was there to win big, there was also the opportunity to fail big. And so I saw it as a win-win. You either win really big and you come back into the house, you take out Johnny Mananas, or you leave and you learn a valuable lesson. And mm-hmm. so I wasn't really worried at that point about him and I. I wasn't sure what was going to happen, but... I'm an advocate for letting people make their own decisions because we're each, we're all our own individuals. I'm never really going to tell somebody what to do. Yeah. And then when Jordan uh, was eliminated, obviously you seemed like you were upset that he didn't get to give you any type of goodbye. Was that by choice or, I mean, we don't really see many of the people be able to do goodbye, so did he try to say something to you or did he just have to leave? He said that the producer said not to come back up and say goodbye. So, I mean, I don't know. It all happens really quickly. I don't know what happened. We just, even regard, like, that's not even what I was talking about when I said you don't get to say goodbye. I was talking more in a general sense. Like, even if he would have come and said goodbye to me on the thing, it's still really, really quick that you're separated. It's not like, it's not like, you know, it's it's hard to explain because it's just really it's just really shocking. It's either yes, you're back in the house, or no, you're gone. And wh- and if you're gone, you know there was also the possibility that you could come back. So you know, obviously, you're always hoping for the. Well, I was at that point. I was hoping for the best, but I wasn't sure what was going to happen, and so it's just very sudden. Mm-hmm. It wasn't. It didn't really. Me saying that he didn't get a chance to say goodbye wasn't necessarily saying that I wanted him to come and, like, kiss me. Like, I don't care about that or give me a hug or anything. It was just, like, the the quickness of it after the elimination. Yeah. No, I can understand that. Just, you just got a melee and then you just have to go about, you know, staying focused on the prize, which obviously is tough when you build a connection with someone like that. So it's kind of tough when they're just not there. And it's, just, you can't, it's not like you can just pick up the phone and call them because you're completely shut off. So I understand how it's just once it's tough, so you can get that. Uh, one of the other moments I want to discuss with you was the execution list that you set up with Devin when she was talking about who to vote for. So was that something you just kind of just thought of on the spot when she was kind of just, you know, you thinking out loud? So, how, like, how did that uh, whole thing develop? Yeah, I was just thinking out loud. I was just telling her my gameplay. She came and asked me, and I was said, all right, well, here's where I'm at. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I just listed all the girls in no particular order, and then I I counted, you know, who I was saving first, who I was saving second, like who's my number one, who's my number two, who's my number three, and she was number five on my list. Do you remember what the order was that you told her? It would probably be like, it was, I mean, I don't remember if Camilla was there at that point. Was Camilla there? Um, I think that was the week she went home, if I'm not mistaken. I think. Okay, I think Maybe it not. was like, um, I think it was Cara, Nani, uh, Jessica, um, who else was there? Uh, I think Camilla was on, I think Camilla was. Yeah, then Teresa, Anamisa, Devin, and then Camilla. I think that was just seven. Seven or eight, yeah. Um, I think he was. I think I think at the time it was Cara, Nani, Camilla, Jessica, and Devin, then like and then, John A, then Teresa and Anissa. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm curious how you, it seemed like you got pretty close with uh, Nani and Jess, and I don't think you did a season. I know you definitely knew do one with Jess, but uh, with Nani. So how did you kind of form those uh, those relationships with them throughout the season? Well, Jessica's just a sweetheart. I like Jessica. Um, <clears throat> she's young, 
but she's she's just very nice. And we actually, I think, on the challenge where you had to, you had I was partnered with Kahada, and you had to race the car and then ride the bike around the obstacle course. There was mm-hmm. a moment that Jessica and I had there where we connected on something that had happened to both of us in our personal lives, and um, you know. It was significant enough that I have not been able to share that information with really many people in my life, and mm-hmm. um, so that bonded us. And ever since that, um, you know, we we were also roommates. So we, you know, she was she she was just a sweet a sweet girl. And okay. um, Nani, I mean, who doesn't like Nani? Nani's awesome. She's so much fun and. She's so open and honest, and she fights for what she believes in. And the thing about Nani is, um, you know, I'm skeptical usually of most people when they say that they want to work with me. Um, Like, for example, another thing that bothered me about Anissa was that she would come to me and be like, you know, you and me, let's be, you you know, like, let's be you and me together. And then the next day she would be talking shit about me and Jordan and how she hates me. And it's like, I just don't like the flip-flop. Anissa is a flip-flop and Teresa is a flip-flop. Um, but anyway, so Nani came to me and she said something along the lines of, um, you know, like, I'm down with I'm down with you stuck, basically. <laughs> and, like, I sat back and I, I sat back and took that in. And then over the next couple of challenges, I watched how she acted and she acted in a way that was in alignment with what she said to me. And so I was like, okay, I can trust this girl. I got her back too, you know? Okay. Yeah. So Absolutely. Actions speak louder than words. I like people who stand by what they say. Yeah. So the last thing I wanted to discuss with you was from the burial for Devin's Wake. Now, this this has to just be from just the pure boredom in the house that you just have to do something so fun. So what are the other kind of fun things that up until this point that we haven't gotten a chance to see that you you enjoyed? Well, when I had my guitar, Kahada and I would sit and play it and, you know, he would teach me lot he would teach me chords and he we would just play together. He's a way better guitarist than I am and he does a lot with music down in um, in Georgia and in Nashville with his band Radio Lucent. Um, and so I, you know, was looking to him to try and improve my playing and just ask him as much questions as I could as possible. Um, other than that, like, not much, you know. I just kind of wander around the house and, like, try and plan my escape without being caught. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of trapped in there. There's only so many times you can go to the kitchen and, and then go play around the world before you get bored, you know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, so it was, uh, it was really great getting a chance to talk with you again. Uh, what can you tease us up a little bit for the final few episodes of the season? What what can we expect to say? The final few episodes? Well, um, I don't know if people have seen, but there's a sneak peek of Car Maria and I getting getting into it where, you know, like tension starts getting really high. She starts getting paranoid. I start getting annoyed. And then, you know, you see a lot of people gossiping and really adding fuel to the fire instead of um, trying to put it out. That was another reason why I liked Nani was during the whole argument between me and Car Maria, she didn't get involved and she didn't take sides. Every time somebody came to – every time, you know, um, I came to her and I was like, you know, what should I do? She was like, listen, you really just need to talk to Cara about it. And every time Cara came to her, she she would say, Cara, you really need to talk to Laurel about it. And, um, you know, it just bothered me. There were, like, a few people in the house that really only added um, added to the problem by – trying to convince Kara of how bad a person I am instead of being like, listen, why don't you two just talk it out instead of um, not speaking to each other, like, quash it. Right. Yeah. And she's she's a good person. She's a good friend to have, absolutely. So uh, where can everyone find you on Twitter to keep up with what you're doing? 
My Twitter is Laurel Stucky. Laurel Stucky. All right. All right. Thank you very much, Laurel. It's good talking to you. I wish you best of luck for the rest of the season. All right. Thanks. Bye. There it is, the Bus Drivers Are Out podcast for episode 8 of the Challenge for Easy. This is in the books. Hope you'll enjoy my chat with Laurel. I think she always has a good perspective to get a good handle on what is happening inside the house and in the competition. Now, before I leave you for today, let me just remind you to follow me on Twitter at Bus Drivers Are Out. Go to busdriversaroute.com and subscribe to my YouTube channel. All right, that will do it for me. So until next time, have a good one.